Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be solving another leak code problem and this one is called add two numbers. And I think it's problem number two on leak code. So this problem is actually a pretty classic one. It's this whole concept of being able to add two numbers. There's actually a lot of variations of this numbers where um, you use arrays to add numbers and you know you could also add decimal numbers which adds like a complexity to it. In this particular example, we're going to be using linked lists and we're going to add linked lists and we have to return a linked list at the end that has our final result. So without further ado, let's dive into this problem. So I'll go ahead and read this problem. You are given two non-empty linked lists representing two non-negative integers. The digits are stored in reverse order. This is very important, by the way. And each of their nodes contain a single digit. Add the two numbers and return it as a linked list. You may assume the two numbers do not contain any leading zero except the number zero itself. So here's an example where there's two linked lists in reverse order, two, four, and three, five, six, and four. So the output is seven, zero, and eight. So the values that we're actually adding is 342 and 465, which is 807. So one, one important thing to know here is that between numbers four and six, the, that value is 10. And one of the rules of this linked list is that it has to be a single digit that is stored in that linked list. And we'll get into one thing that I like to always point out of these leak code problems is all of the information that are given to you. For example, we're specifically told that it's in reverse order. Now, why would that be like kind of an important factor? Well, if you solve this in an array, most of the times they wouldn't put it in a reverse or order because you, it's a lot easier to go traverse backwards from an array than to traverse backwards from a singly linked list, right? If we actually had like a doubly linked list, this problem could be done without essentially the problem giving us this entire thing in reverse order. So essentially the algorithm for this problem is for every given node, we are going to grab the value from the first linked list and the second linked list, and we're gonna add them together. And we're also going to add any carryover that we had from our previous input. And because we know that one of the rules is every single node element only has a single digit number, the highest number that we could get is 18, you know, nine plus nine. So we know for a fact that the, carry, the maximum carryover is one. If there is a carryover, there is one. The other consideration in edge cases that we need to worry about is what if we have different length of linked lists? So that's another edge case that you need to think about and how do you properly increment your linked lists so that you could handle both cases of one linked list being empty and the other not being empty. So let's go ahead and dive into the code implementation. So when I do these leak code problems, I always like to break up my problems into a few pieces. For example, I know that I need traversal. I need to traverse through the entire linked list and for both. And I also mentioned in my kind of explanation that I need to make sure that I could traverse all of them, all both linked list one and linked list two, even if they may not be the same length. So I'm gonna tackle that uh, section first. So let's say while L1 or L2, we will, if we have L1, then we'll do L1 equals L1 dot next. If we have L2, L2 equals L2 dot next. Just with this line of code, we're able to successfully traverse both L1 and L2. Once both of these are false, then we will exit out of this while loop. And that's because of this expression right here. The next piece of information that I need is I need to calculate a running sum. So I need to grab the values somehow from L1 and L2. So as I mentioned before, that L1 and L2 could be in different lengths. So I need to make sure that the value that I extract is either L1 or some default value. And obviously a good default value, something that won't affect their sum is zero. So let's say let L1 value equals 
we're going to use the ternary here. If L1 is present, then we'll just grab the value from L1. Else, um, we will just return zero. And we'll do the same thing for L2 value, like so. So now we have the value of L1, and we also have the value of L2. Um, let's go ahead and now sum up our values. Let sum equals L1 value plus L2 value. So this is our sum of these two values. Now in the explanation, I mentioned that we will need some form of a carry. What if we, what if the previous number we had, we had a carry? We know for a fact that we need a carryover of one value or maybe a carryover of zero value. So let's go ahead and instantiate that. Let carry equal zero. Because we know that when we first start our first like initiation, the first value, the so carryover of that first number is zero. So we're going to initialize it here. And the reason why we're initializing it up here is because later down the line, we need to, for every iteration, we need to see if we need to update this carry to one or not. Now let's go ahead and check if this sum is greater than nine. We need to properly strip off the carryover and essentially set the remainder to be the actual value that we'll store in this new linked list node. Before this, let's just say let um, new value. So this is the actual value. We're just gonna set it to sum for now. And then if the sum is greater than nine, then we say new value equals sum mod 10. Here, we're essentially stripping off the 10th place. And that means we need to update our carry to be one. So we know that this is one because we mentioned that the maximum number that we can have in this sum summation is essentially um, 18, nine plus nine plus the carry. So that's essentially 19, right? That means our carry will always be one maximum. And we know that we will have a carryover of one value if the sum is greater than nine. So down here, we need to now take this new value that we have and somehow assign it into a linked list. So one thing we haven't been doing is thinking about how are we going to return? What are we returning here? So let's go ahead and take care of that. So the prompt says we need to return a linked list. So let's go ahead and create a head which is, uh, let's just create an arbitrary linked list and we'll reuse the linked list node definition that we had above. And this could just be a null value. We could say zero if we really want, but this is really just a way for us to keep track of our nodes. And let's say node equals head. And down here, we're going to say node.next equals and we will create a new linked list node and we'll pass in that new value here. And afterwards, we need to make sure we reassign, uh, we update the linked list that we're essentially using as the result. We also need to update that. So we're in the same, um, essentially the level of the nodes as all the other linked lists, the linked list one and linked list two. So if you look at this code, one thing that we didn't do yet is this carryover right now as it stands in this code base, it will constantly update, it will never reset its zero after one, right? So logically, after we created this sum here and we used up this carryover, we don't, we want to make sure to reset carry to zero because we don't want to, once we use that carryover value of one, we don't need to reuse it for the next one. And only if this sum is also greater than nine, then we want to reuse, then we want to create a new and update the carryover as well. So this is essentially kind of the heart of the algorithm. I think we've got majority of it. I think there's one piece that we are missing. And the last thing we need to do is if there is a carry, so if we have at least one value of carryover, so this will happen if the last node in our linked list uh, happens to have a carryover of one, 
then we actually need to go farther than all of the linked lists can go. We actually need to add one more node at the very end, which is the value of the carryover. So node.next equals new node, um, sorry, link list node, and we'll do carry. And finally, we just need to return head.next. And note that our head, we just assigned as a random list node here. So that's why we, need, we just have to point to where the number actually starts. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll go ahead and submit it. And there you go. So we have successfully solved the add two numbers. This is a classic problem. Um, I highly recommend you guys to think about doing it with an array and also add a decimal number and think about how that would affect your algorithm. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video and I'll see you guys on the next one.